Okay, so here's the next video. This is going to be over Article 344, um, RMC, which is Rigid Metal Conduit. I was going to do them both together, and then um, it got to the point where it was getting a little bit longer, and so I didn't want to deal with having issues with uploading it. Uh, so anyway, so RMC, Article Rigid metal conduits. Okay, <clears throat> so this one's going to go a little bit faster. So I'm going to try to focus on the things that are different uh, from IMC. Now, since I did a joke at the beginning of the last video, which is right before this one, I'm just going to do a real quick what my kid uh, said yesterday. So, what is black and white and red all over? Give you a second. All right, a newspaper. <laughs> okay, get it. Black and white. Okay. Um, all right. So, Article Three Forty Four, Rigid Metal Conduit Type RMC. Okay, the definition for rigid metal conduit is a threadable raceway of circular cross section designed for the physical protection um, and routing of conductors and cables and for use as an equipment grounding conductor when installed with its integral or associated couplings and uh, appropriate fittings. Now, if you look at the difference between that one and IMC, it's almost the exact same. The only difference is, um, this one says a threaded raceway, it doesn't say steel. And we're going to find out why, because um, RMC can be more than just basically steel. Okay, so, um, if we go into, and like I said, we'll go through this a little faster because um, it's it's a lot like RMC, or IMC, excuse me, and we've kind of talked about it in class. Okay, so, um, the use is permitted. Um, if you go to 344.10, A, atmospheric conditions and occupancies, we have galvanized steel, stainless steel, and red brass RMC. Um... It, it basically says there that we can use them under all occupancies, right? Excuse me. So, um, and, and again, it goes to show you how uh, versatile RMC is, um, and just like a lot like IMC, we can use it in a lot more environments because it is rigid, it's, it's, it's stronger, and... Yeah. What are you doing? I'm doing a video for my students. Oh. It's okay? Okay. Uh... Anyhow, so now I got somebody watching me. Um, it's it's going to be it's a lot stronger and it's going to be able to handle a lot more. Um, not only um, beat uh, more of a beating, careful, buddy, um, but it'll be able to handle um, more of the atmospheric conditions. Okay, don't bump this. Okay. Okay. You see it? Oh, get back. <laughs> get back. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Future electrician here. Okay. Can Daddy finish now? Alright. Let me close this door. Okay, so. Um, we also have aluminum RMC. Uh, it says aluminum shall be permitted to be installed where approved for environment. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, rigid aluminum uh, conduit encased in concrete or direct contact with the earth to provide the pro uh, approved supplementary corrosion protection. Again, what's the issue with aluminum? We know this from our talking about aluminum conductors, is it is very corrosive. It corrodes easy. What are you doing? Um, okay, so a lot of times you're not going to do it, but it, it, for special purposes, and of course, obviously, you can. Um, we're going to jump to. Of course, B says corrosive environments, um, and it talks about the different different things for those. Center fill for on C, um, wet locations. Again, um, as long as you have it protected with the correct coating, you can use it about anywhere. And then E, just like um, with IMC, it's new this year or this code book in 2020, and it says that um, it can be used in a where and subject to severe physical damage. And so. Um, again, like I said, it's it's a very thick conduit. It's going to be hard to bend by hand, 
And so it can handle a lot more stress and a lot more beating. So we can use it in a lot more areas than um, IMC or than, R, than uh, EMT, excuse me. Again, EMT is, of course, still used more, as used in more places, um, just for the fact that as long as it doesn't, isn't going to have that damage or the corrosive environment, uh, it's going to be easier to bend, easier to carry, easier to lift, put together, all those things. But uh, RMC, IMC can both handle um, some stress. Uh, uh, 44.14 dissimilar metals. Again, we want to keep those dissimilar metals away from each other so we can stop that corrosive, um, uh, that corrosive action that uh, happens between the two. Um, the, and then one of the issues with that is if we have, let's say, between couplers, if we use coupler of one type of, of steel and then your conduit of another type of steel, it's going to corrode at that, pot, at that spot and then we could lose a lot of contact, especially if we're using it as a ground, we can lose our ground, right? Or we can change it so it has a high enough resistance where it won't chip a breaker, and then we've got hot conduit, right? And that's something we want to stay away from. Okay, uh, 344.20 size. So here's where it changes a little bit. So size. Minimum is again just like normal, half inch. Okay, max. Is now six inches. Okay, and again we kind of talked about this before in class, but that is because it's so much more rigid and stronger. It can handle the weight of those conductors um, and, there, and, there, and a lot of the other um, stresses you're going to put it through. Okay, so. Um, 344.22 number of conductors again that's conductor fill um, and that's chapter 9 tables um, 344.24 and 26 bends how made and number in a run okay just like normal or just like IMC excuse me we're going to mostly use um, power benders whether it be um, hydraulic or electric um, what we have to and one thing I didn't mention in uh, IMC is it says here that um, we can't, when we bend it, we can't effectively reduce the diameter of the pipe. Okay, what does that mean? It means we don't want to oval out the conduit, right? Because it's going to make it harder to pull stuff through. Okay, okay, and that's obviously a little more exaggerated, but uh, just to show you what, what that's talking about. Okay, um, and so we just need to be careful. Sometimes you put the pipe in wrong or, or whatever. Um, and it, it will uh, bend that a little bit or you guys have seen with EMT um, How easy that is to kind of flatten a little bit and so we want to make sure we don't do that Effectively meaning enough that it affects how much uh, our wire can be pulled through or how easy our wire can be pulled through Okay, and then of course number in one run just like everything else Okay, so junction box condo bodies, right? Um, and again like we talked about before it's so that um, it's, it's because you get any more than that, and it's going to be very hard to pull anything else through. Okay. Um, 344.28. What? He's down here. Um, sorry. It's working from home. That's what happens. Um, 344.28. Reaming and threading. Just like before, all cut ends need to be reamed, and thread, uh, reamed on the threading um, of those conductors. Um... Okay, so then the cutting die, excuse me, uh, the cutting die, three quarter, or three quarter inch taper per foot shall be used in, in any of your conduit, um, um, your conduit cutters, I guess your thread cutters, are going to be set for that. Securing and sporting. RMC, just like IMC, um, basically the same for screwing and sporting. Three feet and ten feet, right? So three, excuse me, three feet from the box and 10 feet on straight runs. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and then again, we can go, we can go that additional up to five feet if there's nothing in the, uh, that three foot section to support it from. Uh, the main thing is with, with the uh, RM, uh, RMC, it's gotta be one solid chunk. Um, we wanna have, we wanna have a solid chunk from the last box, I guess, to the first point of support, right? Um, just because if we don't have a solid chunk, then we're gonna have uh, uh, we're gonna have issues with flexing and bending. Okay, and it's not as strong. 
Um, and again, we have the 20 foot rule that we talked about with IMC. If you're going vertical uh, from a piece of equipment up into the ceiling uh, or something like that. If you look at table 344.30B2, screwing for rigid uh, metal conduit, it shows you your trade size and then it shows you um, the feet uh, for your maximum distance. If you look at it, it shows that we have half inch to three quarter inch is 10, right? But then it goes up to one inch is 12, um, inch and a quarter, inch and a half is 14, and so on, okay? Um, if you read back on number um, 344.30B2, it says the distance between sports for straight runs of conduit shall be permitted in accordance with table 344.30B2, provided the conduit is made up with threaded couplings and supports that prevent transmission of stress um, to termination where conduit is deflected between supports. Okay, so basically the only time we can use that table for adjusting our support distances is, is it has to be threaded. It has to be a threaded conduit because it's going to hold tighter. And again, that picture that I showed you with IMC when we had the running threads, that's another reason we don't want those running threads. We want it nice and tight so it can help support itself. Okay. Um, but we, and it also has to be, we have to know that it's not going to transmit too much stress by going that extra distance, right? Because most of the time, the conduit size we're going to use is 10 feet. Um, and so we don't want to go too much more than that, regardless, unless we have to, just because it needs that support. And if, especially the, so now that we go up to six inches, that's going to be a whole lot bigger conduit and we're going to have a lot more stuff in there, right? Um, okay, and of course, 344.42. Um, has B has the same thing with the running threads. Running threads are not allowed. And we talked about why that's not um, um, a good idea in IMC. Um, same thing here, 344.46 bushings. Again, if we end um, a conduit where the threads are sticking into a box, we have to put one of those plastic bushings on, the thread on, uh, protect our, our conductors as they come out and, and start going into our box in different, in different ways. Um, Splice and taps, 344.56, again, um, just like IMC, we cannot, or any form of conduit, I guess, we cannot have splices or taps inside of the conduit itself. It has to be at a conduit body or a junction box or something like that. We have to always be able to get to our splices later on, except for a very few um, certain circumstances, which we will talk about in other videos and stuff. Um, but uh, just to know you're not going to have your splices, you're not going to have your taps, you're not going to have anything like that inside the conduit itself. 344.60 grounding, RMC sh uh, sh shall be permitted to be an equipment grounding conductor. And again, it's permitted, and, and I don't have as much a problem with it as long as it's threaded and threaded tight, but, it, but there's always that chance that something's not going to be quite threaded or right. Uh, it's not going to be quite tight and right. And then you, if it comes loose, you lose your ground. And so I still say, run the ground. I know it's going to cost more, but um, it's better to be safe with, with people's lives and everything else than sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Part 3, 340.100 construction, um, it says RMC shall be the following, steel will protect the coatings, and again, because steel rusts easier, um, aluminum, uh, red brass, and stainless steel, so we have a little more options here. And then your marking, um, okay, every, uh, uh, your conduct has to be marked every 10 feet. Uh, if you read 344.120, um, and again, so that we know the size and everything else, but that's also for the manufacturers, because they're the ones that are going to do the marking. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up. It's a little messy. Pause it if you need to. Okay. Just make sure you remember those things. Um, that's about it for RMC. Like I said, it's a little shorter here because um, I just covered some of the different stuff. Um, for RMC timber IMC. So hopefully you understand this video and um, I'll be back tomorrow or so for the next one. All right.